Joining me now is former Reagan budget chief and the author of The Great Deformation, The Corruption of Capitalism in America, David Stockman. David, it's a, it's a, it's a big book, but I'll tell you something. Uh, I love this book. Uh, it, it, it really talk about, it take, might take all summer to read the thing, but at least it's a great <laughs> read. Uh, you start off, I want to start with the top of the book. You start off with the Blackberry Panic of 2008. What, you aren't right. happy about what happened. No, that's really what motivated me to write the book. I think it's the Rubicon because you had a Republican White House who basically threw away every principle of free markets and of financial responsibility and fiscal rectitude, for that matter, that the Republican Party ever had. They allowed Hank Paulson on the third floor of the Treasury with all his Goldmanites to basically do anything that was necessary to bail out the remaining firms on Wall Street. And I go through it and I demonstrate the rationale they gave was not true. It consisted of urban legends that uh, I think after the fact we can document were gross exaggerations if they had any reality at all. We weren't heading for a depression 2.0. This was not going to spread, in my view, beyond the canyons of Wall Street. AIG was not a contagious disease. It could have easily been put into bankruptcy. The Main Street banks, uh, the community banks of the nation were not in trouble because they did not engage in this kind of gambling with the derivative securities and uh, CDOs and the mortgage backed uh, subprime uh, uh, debt and so forth. So I think what I was trying to do is set the record straight and unfortunately the Republican Party destroyed its reputation doing this. Why would they believe us anymore, uh, or Republicans, when they say free markets yeah. are the way we have to run our economy if we bailed out GM, AIG, and Wall Street, uh, Goldman Sachs effectively and Morgan Stanley on the Republican watch. Well, it's a terrible point in history. I want to remind people that not only in the introduction we talked, of course, about your, your, your name came up uh, on a national basis when you were budget director in the Reagan administration, but after that you went to Wall Street and worked on Wall Street. So you know the inside of Washington right. and Wall Street, the two places that people seem to not trust anymore. Yeah, those are the seven words that you can boil my <laughs> large book down to. Do not believe Washington or Wall Street. And they're again peddling a lot of illusions that everything is fixed, everything is better, and it's not. The Fed is a serial bubble machine. It's reflating this huge financial bubble for the third time. And I think we're heading for another spill, just like with the dot-com crash, just like with the housing and the Wall Street crash that we had in 2007-2008. Yeah. Um, uh, the, you know, the, the Fed is the largest threat to the future of our economy and of uh, sound prosperity uh, that you can imagine. And I regret to say the people running it today, Bernanke and before him, uh, Greenspan, were appointed by Republicans. This is why I fear for the future of the country, because we have no conservative party left economically. You, Both parties are using essentially free lunch economics. You, you've been making people uh, within the Republican Party and the Democrats mad at you for as long as I can remember back even right. in the Reagan days. You sound a little bit like Ron Paul. Well, I'll tell you, I made the Democrats mad in the Reagan days because I called attention to the fact that spending was out of control and that we needed to free up our private economy and let it breathe and let it grow. That's why we wanted the rate cuts. But unfortunately, we didn't have enough troops on the Republican side to cut the spending, to shrink the welfare state. Ronald Reagan left it almost the same size as he found it. But we did have the big tax cuts, and that's where we got deficits out of control and the myth uh, that developed that deficits don't matter. And so now I have to really call out the Republican Party because the three things that they stood for historically, free markets, fiscal rectitude, and sound money, all three of them have been repudiated by several Republican administrations and several generations of Republican uh, politicians on Capitol Hill well, over the last couple of years. You go back, I mean, you've got FDR, you've got Nixon, You've got you've got a, a whole crowd. You've got Fed chairmen. You've got just about everybody in the indictment. And so there's a lot of people, David, that are um, in the Washington yeah, political say, economic yeah. world, and they're and they're calling you every name under the book that you're ranting. You're you know all kinds of things. What's your reaction to all well, of that? 
Uh, well, my, re my reaction is that I'm not surprised because I believe we have a consensus in Washington that's based on policies that are going to take us right over the edge, massive deficits that they don't want to do anything about. They just like to argue about and point fingers at each other. And the idea that we can allow a rogue central bank of 12 people sitting on that uh, Fed board today to basically run the economy. They're basically a monetary politburo that have more power over the U.S. economy and of Wall Street and the financial markets than the old Soviet Union Politburo ever had itself. And it, when we break down the financial system, we make interest rates simply pegged numbers that the Fed picks out of thin air, which is how we get interest rates today. That's not well, supply and demand. That, yeah, that's not the market. So everybody's mad about that because I'm really calling out the fact that we're in a bubble. I'm also calling out the fact that there there were many heroes historically along the way, starting with Calvin Coolidge, who actually believed in balanced budgets, starting with Eisenhower, who did it again, adding a great secretaries of the Treasury like Bill Simon, who did fight in the 70s to cut budgets. Volcker stopped inflation. And even at the end, we had Republican appointees like Sheila Baer on the FIDIC, who tried to stop the bailout and the Goldman gang uh, from bailing out their own uh, chestnuts, and of course was just uh, ignored and shoved aside. So we're in a great historical struggle, and the three principles that are so important, fiscal rectitude, free markets, and sound money are losing, and that's why our economy is in such great trouble. Well, 